I actually grew up in the uh, California area uh, near San Francisco, and um, I, I actually started playing piano very young at about age three. Um, and I thought I was going to be a pianist uh, for the longest time, up till high school. I didn't actually get started with percussion until I was 15, 16. I got interested because um, I was into rock and roll. I was into drum set a little. I fiddled with it a little bit uh, at earlier ages, but never really took it seriously. And when I was in high school, I, I decided that um, you know, I wanted to try it and see, and see if I could do both. So I started studying with uh, Anthony Cerrone, who was back then in the San Francisco Symphony, and a little bit with Barry Joukowsky, who was a timpanist back then, and got involved with youth orchestras, San Francisco Symphony Youth Orchestra. And once I got into that and had some success, um, it sort of got me more and more interested, and the piano became less for me, um, which upset my family, but uh, made me happy. I think there are only pros with playing piano and percussion, um, especially at a young age. I see players who come through that have had piano training versus players that haven't always have an advantage in one way or another. Either their instincts are more finely tuned, their sense of phrasing is more finely tuned, um, their just general musical vocabulary is greater. I strongly recommend anybody who is young, who is, has the chance to play piano along with drums, um, I would definitely recommend it. A good example is, is I, I approached a student one time and I asked him to play a musical phrase and he didn't know what that meant. He was like, well, do you want eighth notes? Do you want sixteenth notes? He was thinking on a different level. He wasn't thinking about a musical sentence. He was thinking about the horizontal note value. And I think when you are studying more of a melodic instrument, um, especially one that involves bass, bass clef and treble clef, that you really have a sense of melody and accompaniment. You have a sense of you know, um, sensitivity from the melody versus you know, the non-melodic statements. Um, so it's, it's uh, something that's very beneficial, I think, uh, in, in any musician's development. I actually had decided that I was going to become a great snare drummer uh, my first year of college. And that's mainly what I practiced. I practiced about five hours of snare drum every day. And, and most of it was soft playing. Um, and, I, and I really had a list of, of things that I would play. Three camps, I played for three years. Um, and I had it from 30 to the quarter note to 210. Um, and I would go through it and it took me, usually took me an hour just for that one. But I did it every day and I did it doubles, singles. And um, by the time I got out of college, I could play soft snare drum. Um, so it really doesn't have to be something that, you know, is too deep and profound as far as your, you just have to be, have to be listening to your body and listening to your sound and the control will come if you work. I'm one that really had to work hard. I'm not one that things came naturally. So I really had to focus and put in a lot of hours. Uh, and I think that's true with anybody. Uh, person who is really, really talented, who doesn't work, is going to have a little bit of a hard time versus the person who is not as talented, who works really hard. Fortunately, uh, with, with Tony, um, I knew how to read really well because I had all this piano. So um, he didn't have to worry about me not knowing how to play pretty much anything that he threw in front of me. He was very good at not overwhelming me and not making me feel like um, I was behind. Uh, in fact, he did the opposite. He, he really gave me a lot of confidence. And he got me lessons with Roland Koloff very early because they were friends. And so whenever Roland came into town, I got a lesson with him. And I even got a lesson with Saul Goodman. Uh, and he was late in his you know, career. He had finished playing. So Tony gave me opportunities that I couldn't really get. And I think a good teacher actually gives, is able to give a student the confidence that he needs. Uh, whether or not he, he's really talented or not, because um, confidence will take you a long way. And that's what Tony did for me. Saul was very um, extroverted, <laughs> I have to say. His whole approach to the instrument was um, one that I had never really seen before. He, he, was, he was such a master at um, 
you know, achieving the right kind of sound and his rhythmic intensity was, was um, second to none. And he really concentrated with me with um, musical ideas and getting different shapes and colors on timpani. I hadn't really thought of timpani that way. I just thought, you know, rhythm and in intonation were important. But he started getting me to think about uh, different colors you can get, um, different ways of articulating, um, ways different mallets can work for you or against you. He just got me thinking on another level. I think Saul is, was the type of guy who could, who could um, find your best points and work off of them. And I think that's what he did. And I think that's why he was such a successful teacher. I mean, he placed so many people in orchestras. I don't think there's anybody who comes close to the amount of students that Saul had that actually made it into the percussion world.